So we've talked a lot about long distance landlording. Millennial Mike has been on the channel. He lives in Seattle, invests in Gary, Indiana, for example. We're going to talk to Casey about, is it possible to self-manage rentals that are thousands of miles away? Casey, how you doing? I'm doing really good today, Michael. Thanks for having me on. I got to tell you just right off the cuff, uh, I nothing scares me more than potentially self-managing thousands of miles away. But uh, tell me what you've got. Is it possible? I agree. I think it's very scary. And I don't really recommend it for new investors or investors who don't already have a team in place. But I get the question asked so many times. I want to self-manage out of state. So for everyone that's wondering, what does it take to self-manage out of state? Why am I scared for you if you want to self-manage out of state? And oh. what can you do to maybe mitigate those you know, situations to where you can have a positive experience. So yeah. first thing uh -huh. is, there's a few instances where you really need to be there. And if it's not you, somebody else needs to be there. So the first thing you're going to need is an actual boots on the ground person who is 100% local. And it could be your realtor, although that's not really what they do. And they're not really your friend. So my advice would be, if you are managing out of state, is it a place where your mom and dad live, your sister, your aunt, a best friend, someone who is your friend who can be there for you? Because if there's a flood in the middle of the night, is your realtor or someone you barely know going to jump in their car? Probably not. So you're going to need somebody who is there. You're, the main, um, the main like time where you're going to 100% always need someone is for putting tenants in the property. It's for showing. It's for meeting the tenants. And a lot of times you can get a realtor, right? Or a, some property management companies will do like a one-time thing where instead of managing all the time, they will just get the property, you know, they'll lease it for you. They'll do showings and they'll lease it. And then here you go. Now you do the monthly day to the day-to-day -day stuff. And when I was in California as a real estate agent, I used to do lease. I used to help with leases. So it would, I would charge one month's rent. And I would show the property, collect applications. And then here you go, owner, you decide who you want. I'll help with the lease agreement. And then I'm done. So you need someone to do that. Um, another thing you need is a legit bona fide list of subcontractors and people you can call. Because when it's the heat of the summer and the air conditioner goes out, if you do not have a, um, a reputation and like, um, experience with an HVAC guy and you're brand new and you just call him from the phone book, you're going to be on the bottom of their list and they're going to take care of all their other repeat customers first. So you need to have a really good list of subcontractors and people you're going to need, which includes if you have trees, you'll need a tree guy, you'll need an HVAC guy, you'll need a plumber, a technician, and a handyman. You may not really need a contractor, right? Because you're going to know when you're going to need those guys and you can get quotes, but you might need an electrician at a moment's notice. You might need a plumber at a moment's notice. And so an HVAC guy, it's always the HVAC trust. So you'll need to have those people that, that know you so that they will show up for you. They will do a good job. And if yeah. you're not local and if you've not had properties for a long time, you may not have a Rolodex of companies you can count on to show up. So that's yeah, a loved, couple of things. I loved where you started that. I mean, if somebody's going to do out-of-state investing and self-manage, I think your first point is exactly where I went. You, This is what how I position it. You need somebody that's going to tell you the truth, not a half-truth. Right. Because basically what I want is somebody to tell me the bad news. Right. Bad news never gets better with time. I don't need somebody to sugarcoat it. I need somebody to tell me exactly what's going on. So you need your friend, family, somebody you've got deep ties with that. That frankly, you're not paying. If you're paying a real estate agent or a property manager or some, you know, maybe you're giving the tenant. I don't know what you're doing, but if they're incented to keep you happy, they're not going to tell you the truth or they'll tell you a half truth that is kind of, kind of true. Absolutely correct. And then you're absolutely right. You need, you need a solid Rolodex of people that you could call on a mo moment's notice, not only to get service, but not to rip you off. Right. Cause again, if you're calling just, you know, down the road, you know, down the phone book, not to age myself, you know, maybe you'll get somebody, but it, you're going to pay through the nose to, to get it done. So, um, 
that's something that property management firms do bring is they bring a Rolodex of folks and they can control costs and they know stuff is going to cost. But, you know, again, there's, there's, I guess there is a way to do it. To be clear, I have never done it and I don't think I ever would, frankly. Um, but a lot of people think about it. Uh, the other thing I want to be clear, uh, kind of a point two is I could see it possible with single family homes. I could not imagine self-managing a 10 unit or a 20 unit in states no, away. Oh far my away. goodness. No way. Right. You agree? No. Yes. No one's going to have your best interest in heart like you will, especially when it comes to something large, like a 10 unit, but maybe you can get away. So I have thought, okay, I live in Memphis. If I move out of state, could I still manage my properties remotely? And even me, I manage, I would say, I would self-manage my current tenants, whoever I still have left. And I may then, depending upon the property, I, I know it well, I know its failures and what usually breaks or problems. There is one house in mind that I know right now, I would just sell if I moved. Like it's just too much trouble. Like I wouldn't even have someone manage it. Mm. But otherwise, even in my better neighborhoods, I, I maybe could self-manage. I could hire a, a property management company to do a one-time tenant placement. I have my team in place. I have friends and, you know, yeah. my mother-in-law still nearby to kind of help out. But I do feel like I eventually would transition out of being self-managing because I'm not going to be there to keep an eye on it. And it, no, nobody would be there, you know. And I'll, I'll throw in one more um, thing, one more thing to think about if you're like, okay, I can have my realtor do tenant placement. I've got my Rolodex. Okay. What about biannual quarterly inspections? Yeah. So that is the one thing that as a landlord, my biggest fault, my biggest fault is not inspecting my properties enough. And if I had, if I do, and I'm going to start going more, check them more often, it would really have stopped a lot of potential problems from occurring. So who is going to go every quarter, every, every, you know, twice a year to go check on your property and make sure that the tenants are following the rules or not smoking. They didn't have people move in your house isn't in shambles. Like who's going to do that? So I really need, it really needs to be somebody nearby. I have some students who are investing out of state and they're going to have their parents help them. Okay, great. Cause they live nearby. Cool. You got mom and dad. They're willing to help do showings and put a lockbox on for contractors. They're willing to be the maintenance man and every quarter and snoop around. Okay. But if you don't have someone looking out for your best interests and keeping an eye on your property, it's, it's, it's not a great idea. You're just asking for trouble. Yeah. So again, I think kind of wrapping this up, I think if you're going to give it a shot, I mean, I would only feel okay if it's single family homes in B again, let's be clear. I think it's single family homes in A or B areas. I think the lift of yeah. doing it in a C area or below is not worth the squeeze. Uh, yeah. If you're going to be doing units, pay a property manager. Cause again, I don't know. I don't know. I've said this lots of times, but never together. Um, being a prop owning property, like 10 units and above, most of the headaches is people conflict mm -hmm. and being out of state dealing with people conflict is not good. You got to nip it in the bud or it gets really bad, really fast. Um, yeah. You got to have people on the ground that you can count on. I, I like family or friends, deep experience, all the stuff you've recommended. So it is absolutely possible, but it also scares me just a little bit. Stacey, where can people find you? Cause you're putting out a lot of amazing stuff. Thank you, Michael. You can find me on Instagram every day at Brick by Brick Wealth. And you can check out my website, brickbybrickwealth.com to see all the other places I am at. Thank you so much.